This is Channel 2 News, coverage you can count on. We will begin to normalize relations between our two countries. Today, President Obama announced a major change in policy toward Cuba. What prompted the policy shift and how northern Nevadans are being impacted tops Channel 2 News at 5 o'clock. Now, this change in policy comes after the release of an American, of course, Alan Gross, who was being held prisoner in Cuba for the last five years. Good evening, everybody. I'm Wendy DeMonte. I'm Kristen Remington. Thanks for being with us tonight. We do begin with team coverage of the shift in Cuban-American relations. Craig Boswell is live in Washington with more on Gross's release and the president's announcement. And Aaron Breen is live in the newsroom after speaking with a northern Nevadan whose family is from Cuba. All right, Craig, let's begin with you tonight. Yeah, Wendy and Kristen, good evening to you. High-level talks leading up to today's surprise announcement began in the spring of 2013. Alan Gross, the U.S. subcontractor held in Cuba since 2009, found out yesterday he was going to be freed. After five years as a prisoner in Cuba, Alan Gross is a free man. This is great. A U.S. plane picked up the 65-year-old Wednesday morning. His wife and the bowl of popcorn he'd been craving were waiting on board. Today is the first day of Hanukkah, and uh, I guess so far it's the best Hanukkah that I'll be celebrating. Gross was working as a subcontractor for USAID, setting up Internet access when he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. With his release on humanitarian grounds, President Obama announced a sweeping change in policy to normalize relations with Cuba for the first time in more than 50 years. Neither the American nor Cuban people are well served by a rigid policy that's rooted in events that took place before most of us were born. The U.S. plans to open an embassy in Havana, ease travel, and allow for more business between the two countries. But in a phone call to Cuban President Raul Castro, President Obama said the communist country needs to end the abuse of its citizens and allow freedom on the island. Several in Congress say that should have happened first. I am in favor of normalizing relations with Cuba. But for that to happen, Cuba has to be normal. Cuba has to be a democracy. Only Congress can completely end the embargo against Cuba in place since 1961. And that phone call between President Obama and Raul Castro lasted between 45 minutes to an hour. We're told it was a very substantive conversation. Wendy and Kristen, back to you. All right, Craig, and before we let you go, we just want to know quickly, how long could it take for travel restrictions between the U.S. and Cuba to ease up? Uh, that could, th these uh, travel restrictions that are being talked about now could ease up uh, pretty soon once the administration gets this ball rolling with some other things they have to do. However, tourism and travel that way is, that is still prohibited at this point and doesn't look like that will be letting up anytime soon. All right, still a lot of details to be worked out. Craig Boswell reporting from Washington tonight for us. Thank you, Craig. Well, the shift in U.S. policy towards Cuba means a lot to Northern Nevadans with Cuban connections. Yeah, in fact, Erin Breen spoke with some of those folks today. She joins us now live in the newsroom with more on that part of our coverage tonight. Erin, what did you find out? Well, Wendy, Kristen, opening up the travel routes between the United States and Cuba is, of course, huge for those with family there. And it could bring a spike in the travel business, too. Lazario Rodriguez is a hard worker. He was born here in the United States, but his family has close ties to Cuba. My mom and dad and my two sisters were born in Cuba. They came in uh, 1977. Yeah? Why? Why? Because they didn't like the government over there too much, so they did, you know, came over when uh, things were not going too good over there. And while he's heard a lot of stories about Cuba and his family there, he's never been there himself. I'm wanting to see family here for a while now. Now that's they've, they've lifted that. It makes it that much more of a plus for me to go and see my family. And he's not the only one already thinking about making a trip to Cuba. For the past 50 years, that trip has always been available to select groups. Today's announcement will make it possible for even more people to go. We've had some people uh, that have been interested in going to Cuba, um, but for the most part, right now, the only way you can travel is if you're an authorized, going with an authorized group and you're going on a humanitarian type of a tour or something. Kelly Wyatt is with Welcome Aboard Travel in Reno. She says when you, you Google the route, this is what you get no participating carriers. But she says even today, some of the tour companies contacted her about expanding their schedules. Almost one every month that they have right now that's restricted because of the embargo, but once it lifts, then this is just gonna, it's just gonna go crazy, if you ask me. Meantime, Lazario Rodriguez says that he's already working 
to save the money up to make that trip. I got grandmas and grandpas that I haven't I haven't even got to meet yet, so hopefully I'll be able to go and do that and take my own kids that can see great grandma and grandpa too. So the bottom line is that the embargo won't be completely lifted, but restrictions will be loosened so that folks can make the trip. Covering the big story, Aaron Breen, Channel 2 News. Aaron, thank you. And for much more on the shift in U.S.-Cuban relations, stay tuned for the CBS Evening News with Scott Pally, who will be reporting live from Havana, coming up next at 6.